This man's name is John Gray, an American from Southern California. He is a true pioneer of environmental issues in Thailand for the past 19 years and started his own ecotourism sea kayaking business. John Gray operates adventure tours all over Thailand and other parts of Asia. He has produced over 250 media projects, started during his years in California and Hawaii, all promoting and defending the environment. Insisting on dutifully collecting water surface debris before I joined him, John Caveman Gray then took me on a personal tour of his eco-wonderland, doing what he loves best, paddling a kayak in Pang Na Bay to show me its highlights. Every day he proudly shows people the geology and biology of our planet. To him, nothing less than a blessing and a miracle. Believe me, he knows everything about it. You've got the mar marine biology and, and marine geology coming up there and lapping those rocks and then you're on terrestrial biology and you're just, it's just all wrapped there together in one. But it's just a, a natural wonderland here in Southeast Asia. It's just so special, yeah. you know. Yeah. And for me, that's just, that, that's just the miracle of our planet. Yeah. And the thing that really bothers me is we're, we have taken that miracle lightly. A believer that ecotourism was kidnapped by mainstream travel, John Gray's mantra is to hugely expand public awareness of conservation. His ongoing effort is to instill a new community mindset for a sustainable future for the world's environment, coupled with a healthy tourism industry. But, oh, there's a speedboat there. This, this company likes to prove they know nothing about kayaking by coming out here in a speedboat. You know, speedboats and kayaks are the absolute antithesis of one another. But uh, so I'm, I'm always uh, in shock when I see this happen. But then here comes another one of, one of these big cattle car boats, right? So we're going to have a pretty good crowd here in a little while. This is called a tidal nape. And all these caves are called tidal nape caves because they're formed by the, the tide actually attacking a fault line in the rock and then uh, working its way into the cave and then uh, connecting up with the lagoon that's made by rainwater coming down from above. Here's a psychid up here. These guys, this was dinosaur food, so that's straight out of Jurassic Park up here. <laughs> you know, then you've got the, the diamond clubs here and uh, you've also got the, the pandanus over here. Here's some staghorn ferns. You know, so it's, but everything out here is bonsai because limestone doesn't really hold water that well. Oh. We're approaching yeah, cave. sure, there, there, here's one of these tidal nape caves. So why don't we head on inside and see if we can get into the lagoon. This guy's really dramatic. It's the smallest cave of them all. You first, John. <laughs> okay, you just follow right on behind me. Okay, Tob? <laughs> Then I was formally introduced to some crab-eating macaques. Crab-eating macaques, they're our fourth closest relative and they're very common out here. Maybe your relative. Uh, they're, they're, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're my relatives actually, you know. My Thai name is Ling Yai, which is Thai for big monkey. Big monkey. And these guys know it, you know. They, when I come in, they go, oh, hey, how you doing? You and know, and they, the, the, they still haven't figured out whether I'm their, their uncle, their cousin, or their offspring. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are, are quite adaptable. They're omnivorous. They eat uh, crabs and oysters. They're a tool-using animal. Uh -huh. They'll actually break open the oysters and the crabs with the rock. 
and uh, they also eat the leaves. They do not eat bananas. People feed the bananas all the time. It's a terrible thing to do. You should just let them live their own natural diet. And do, uh, they're do great these swimmers. They're they swim? excellent swimmers. Yeah. Uh, they can dive in the water, swim underwater about 20 meters, and come up where you'd have no idea where they're going to come up, you know. It's also not advisable to get too close because they can jump. Like this guy up here, yeah. he could probably jump right to there. So I'm not going to get any closer than yeah. this. <laughs> and they can do a lot of damage if they get in your kayak. This is the alpha male sitting down here on the bottom. He's in the, right. he, he's in the patrol position. Yeah, it looks it, like right? he's just Now, if you made us. that guy angry, he could probably jump from that top branch there out into my kayak. So I'm not going to get too close. If you get an angry macaque in your kayak, you got about 100 stitches. An yeah. angry macaque in the kayak. <laughs> it's not the well, way it, it sounds <laughs> interesting, but it's not fun. No. He can swim better than you can. He can bite better than you yeah. can. And he can climb better than you can. So 